Hi everyone, this is a quick artifact spotlight from the Clash of Empires exhibition and today I want to talk about Zulu war shields. Now Zulu shields are a very iconic part of their culture. If you have an impression of traditional Zulu culture the chances are that shields figure in there somewhere. It was very much a part of their military culture in the past. Uh, these are all authentic shields dating to the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. In everyday life, in traditional society, every Zulu man would have one or maybe two or three shields for his personal protection in his homestead. But when he fought to defend his country against foreign enemies, uh, he would be part of a part-time citizen militia, an army organised by the Zulu kings. And he would then go up and join a properly constituted regiment. Every Zulu man belonged to a regiment. Uh, and they would be issued shields to carry into battle. So these actual shields were not the property of the individual. Uh, they were the property of the king. And there would be a big ceremony at the beginning of the war when all of the men came together and joined what they called the Amabuto, their different regiments. These were organised on the common age of the members of that regiment, that Ibuto, uh, and then they would be issued these shields with much ceremony, which they would then carry into battle. So these, in a sense, are the, are the national shields of the old Zulu kingdom. Now, one of the most interesting things about them, they were arranged according to the different regiments by the colours of the hides. Uh, the way that it worked is that there was a, a very large herd of cattle scattered throughout the kingdom, the king's herd, the national herd, which was the sort of accumulated wealth of the nation. And this would be matched according to the colour of the hide. So the different cattle, uh, say you'd have all black cows with white spots on one side, uh, or you might all have white cows or various combinations. And these would be grouped together according to that when they were alive. So of course, when the moment came that uh, a, a regiment needed new shields, the unfortunate cattle with the same matched hide would all be slaughtered and then the shields would be made out of those hides. And in fact, this was a thing that was renewed every few years. There was a, a, a colour coding system going on. Because the Zulu Amabuto were organised according to the common age of the members, uh, so you start out as a young regiment, as they grow up, another regiment is enrolled below them, but they stay the same sort of common age groups going all the way through. Uh, and the colour coding system was that a young Ibuto would have either black or brown hides for the shields. Uh, and as they grew older, and when those shields needed replacing every five or six years, they don't last forever, uh, being stored in, in a thatched hut uh, with obviously insects and rats and all that kind of thing there. Uh, when they were replaced, the new colour has more white on it. Uh, so you might go from black or brown to black with a big white spot, and then the next time it might be white with a big black spot. So by the time you get to the top of the chain, you're carrying predominantly white shields. And white had associations, uh, it has a lot to do with grey hair, actually, uh, with age and experience. Uh, and a Zulu commander then could look around immediately, even on the battlefield, and think, OK, these guys are, are more experienced. These guys, on the other hand, are young and keen and quick, and he can make his deployments uh, accordingly. So this type of shield in particular, this very big one, which was the traditional size going back to the days of King Shaka, uh, it's called Isiflangu, which means to brush aside. You can see why. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to work out why they, uh, why they called it that. You would get two shields out of one hide, one from each side, and the hide was treated and dressed in a, in a particular way by expert shield makers. So you would have this big oval of, of hide, which is the main body of the shield, uh, and then parallel slits are cut in two rows all the way down the front, uh, and more hide is threaded through, usually in a contrasting colour. You can see very clearly here how the black stands out against the white. Often, it's not so obvious on this example, but often uh, if there's a big white patch, it would change colour. So you'd have black on white and then white on black and black again as it goes through the pattern of the shield. And this, these strips of hide fold over at the back and you can see quite clearly here, uh, this is where it goes over and then down the other side. And this is used to support this stick, uh, which actually carries the weight of the shield. So when you're in battle, there's usually a handle that you grip 
but this keeps the thing stiff and makes it much more formidable as a weapon when you're actually fighting. And there was in the early days of the Zulu Kingdom a particular technique for fighting at close quarters. Generally speaking, you have your shield in your left hand and your stabbing spear in your right. Um, here's a good example of a stabbing spear. I wonder if I've got enough room to demonstrate. But broadly, this is the fighting sort of pose and you would go running forward towards the enemy like this. Uh, and then you strike the enemy with the shield. There's a, a, an aggressive motion like that. And as he falls back, then you come in and stab him through the ribs with your stabbing spear. Uh, and this was the great fighting technique of the old Zulu kingdom. It was perfected in the days of King Shaka in the 1820s. Now, there were some changes. This big pattern of shield by the 1870s was regarded as being a little bit obsolete because you're now fighting against white people who've got guns. Uh, it wasn't hand-to-hand -hand shield against shield and spear against spear quite so much. Uh, so you didn't need so much of a slab of hide on your shield. Uh, and they developed a slightly smaller pattern called the umbombuloso, which was also used during the Anglo-Zulu War, both patterns even within the same regiment. And as a footnote, it's interesting, shields are still a part of traditional Zulu culture today. But of course, at the end of the Anglo-Zulu War, uh, the old Zulu military system was broken up. Uh, the king was deposed, there was no more raising of Amobuto, and there was no more making of specifically regimental shields. So the examples that we have tend to date specifically to the 1879 Zulu War. Uh, how have they survived? The reality is, of course, that a lot of them were souvenired by British troops at the end of battles. And a number of these in this collection, uh, the exhibition here, do have particular provenances. Uh, some of them have the shipping labels still on the back where an officer in Zululand has sent it home at the end of the war to be kept as a souvenir. And the reason that they survived, of course, is that they were regarded as a curiosity, as a symbol of somebody's military service, uh, and they've then been kept under fairly good conditions, mostly in the United Kingdom, and they've survived today. It's ironic that in South Africa, these shields generally didn't survive because they weren't valued, whether it was as trophies or whatever, quite so much. And a lot of them therefore shifted to the UK, uh, where the weather conditions and the, the fact that they were kept in sort of uh, houses and uh, out of the damp and the rain and all the rest of it has meant that they've lasted an awful lot longer. So we're particularly pleased actually to be able to accumulate so many together in the Clash of Empires exhibition. Uh, it's very rare to see so many of them in one place and the, uh, a very good representation of the different Amabuto, the different Zulu regiments. Um, we've got the Ukande and Pembu directly behind me, for example, the Uno Kenke over there, the Ngobo Makosi. So if you've read anything about this history or you want to explore it, you've come across these great names of the Zulu regiments. This is probably a once in a lifetime chance to actually come and see the shields that they actually carried into battle uh, all those years ago at the height of the Anglo-Zulu War.